All right, I guess we'll put the Malort back. So first cocktail we're gonna do is a viewer sent me a cocktail a couple days ago that I was pretty, uh, pretty interested in. Okay, it's gonna be with gin, chinar, verna, uh, some fernet branca. Uh, I'm gonna, let's take a look right now. I'm gonna pull up the email. So it says, the email says, it's from, okay, you guys are going to kill me on pronunciation here. Vic, it's called Victor Gavrilenko. Victor Gavrilenko. G-A-V-R-I-L-E-N-K-O. Gavrilenko. It's a viewer cocktail. Well, he got my name wrong. So he goes, hi, Leonardo. My name is Victor Gavrilenko, and I am your biggest fan from Israel. So this cocktail is a, vari a, var a variation on a Negroni. Although this one is a better for after dinner. The name of it's called the housekeeper, which I think is a fantastic name for a cocktail. Uh, and I'm assuming it says Fini Branca, but I'm assuming he just meant Fernet Branca. Um, this looks like one big Amaro bomb, which is right up my alley. So let's get a, our nice little mixing glass out. Let's make this, shall we guys? I'm, I'm excited about this one. I'm assuming stir in a big ice cube, serve in a big ass ice cube. Okay, so uh, it's not going to go in a mixing glass. Or I guess it could go in a mixing glass. You know, I'm very, 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 uh, I am not very decisive today. Bring this, we're going to get our uh, ice knife. Do I bring our ice knife? Yes, we our ice knife. Ah, don't kill yourself with the ice knife. Shaker. All right. There's that big ass piece of ice. Don't try this at home. That's our big piece of ice. bad for the knife and when I really have to sharpen it uh, but uh you know I guess I'll just that that'll have to be my uh that'll be my bag all right here let's cut this piece of ice down I like to try and make these things look like kind of a jewel or something it's just really nice to make it really just have like nice faceted sides and I kind of tend to curve the bottom in for some reason I just think it looks nice that way saying Chris you know barfly sim an ice pick at some point yeah yeah I did get an ice pick but you know what ice pick the three-pronged ice picks are really good for uh, shaping a piece of ice you know like kind of picking it the thing is is that I like an ice knife better because you get a nice clean look whereas where when you're picking something like I don't know if you guys have seen those videos where someone takes a big piece of ice and they pick it until it's a round ball 
Now the thing about that is that you you know if you're gonna do a ball like that, you're gonna have to do it with an ice pick. That being said, you get like all of the stab marks into it, and you have to really like kind of sort of heat up the the piece of ice to get rid of those like kind of stab marks. I think this just looks a lot cleaner. So I like an ice knife better. And then as far as like just like cutting the ice, I just find doing it with a knife is a lot easier than doing it with an ice pick. But I do have I have several ice picks, and Barfly has definitely sent them to me. So there it is. There's our piece of ice. Uh, now we need to get our nice trusty glass that we like to use. Um, I'm going to clean up this ice mess. Let's get it off my sit. Bam! All right, here we go. Victor Gavrilenko. Oh, I haven't cleaned that. Oh, by the way, you know what? That uh, I haven't cleaned it yet, and I don't want to just clean it now, but... That piece of equipment I said that I, I really liked that I got to, today is like, look at this mixing glass. This mixing glass is made out of, it's like a porcelain mixing glass. It's like a, it's like a fired clay mixing glass. Uh, I was given this by Argonaut Brandy um, by my good friend, Scott Richardson, who is the brand ambassador over there. Um, and this is amazing. This is just like, and what's cool about this is I'm pretty sure that porcelain's a pretty good insulator. So I'm really happy about this. Um... All right, let's get into actually making this drink and having a chat after we do, huh? So here we go. Victor Gav Gavrilenko. What do we got? An ounce, ounce and a half of gin, one ounce chinar, half an ounce of Averna, and then 0.33, I'm going to say 0.35. Of the, yeah, three, okay, so here we go. So I'm going to do three-eighths of an ounce. Okay, so uh, we're, I guess uh, we're going to build this into our mixing glass, and then we're going to pour it over the rock. Uh, I'm using the main spirit first, which I shouldn't be. We'll do uh, our we'll do our Fernet Branca, uh, three eighths of an ounce, a little less than three eighths of an ounce. Uh, then we'll do half an ounce of the Averna. I was just so intrigued by this when I saw it, and then one ounce of Chamar. This is like building the bitterness up. All right, let's see how this goes. All right. Yeah, uh, I can I can potentially make, yes, I can definitely potentially make your cocktail. Um, you see, send it to me on Insta. What's your Insta name? Because um, sometimes these things get lost in the, like I, I look at something, I mean to do it, and then they sort of get lost in the shuffle. Um, so if you have sent me cocktails, I'm all about making them. And honestly, well, now that I'm doing these live streams during our like uh, uh, COVID-19 shutdown, I, I feel like I can get to a lot of these, you know, on these live streams um, and then talk about them. So if, if, so if you happen to be watching while I'm making a cocktail, we can definitely have a little chat about it and I can answer some questions for sure. Um, oh, nice. Give it a stir. Stirry poo. Give this piece of ice there. Forgot to get my citrus. I think we're doing we're doing orange, right? We're doing orange. Are we doing orange, Victor? He doesn't say. I'm assuming orange though. I haven't tasted it yet. I still assume orange. And I'll look at uh look at comments while we while we mix. Look. Typically, you put the cheaper ingredients in first in case you make a mistake. Yes, but in this case, all of the cheapest ingredient here is the gin, our main spirit. That is true. Uh, that said, when you have something that is all very expensive ingredients, it doesn't really matter what order you put them in. But yes, you, first you do your simple, then you do your lime or whatever if you're doing a shaking cocktail and vice versa. Averna substitute. Well, here's the thing. Uh, Averna... Here, you know what? Let's have a little taste of it on its own. I mean, I know what a veranda tastes like, but let's just do this the correct way. I don't have little tasting glasses today. You excuse me, you guys. I really don't have any tasting glasses. So let's use a jigger. All right, let's uh, let's taste the veranda on its own. Um, it's very. Here's the thing. It's very hard to sub Amari out for each other because they're all proprietary blends. All of them are going to have sort of a bitter orange uh, back on the back palette. They're going to be bitter orange. Almost all of them have that flavor profile. But um, 
but and then there are some that are that are same uh, in the same category. So for instance, like Braulio is an Alpine Amaro. So if you have another Alpine Amaro, they are going to use ingredients that are very similar. Um, and uh, also like uh, obviously Fernet uh, is a category. So Branca is a Fernet. So Fernet Branca is a is a is a category and a brand. Whereas like uh, there are other Fernets like Luxardo makes a Fernet. And they'll use similar ingredients because they want to hit that same style that has same similar flavor profiles. Ooh. There it is, guys. Let's take a sip. Wow, that's really good. I mean, you have to really love Amari, um, but it is really, really good. So let's just wash our palate really quick. Let's see if I can give you a nice substitute for Averna. You know, that's going to be a tough one. I, you know, I say, I don't know, maybe Bigelay China China would be a good one. Or it's almost as if like it has like, it's it's almost like Amaro Chicharo with a little extra bitterness. Like almost if you took like three parts of Amaro Chicharo and then like half a part of Chinar mixed into it would be good. Taste Chinar on its own? Sure. Why the heck not? Got to rinse my, my tasting jigger, but I will. All right. And I have a little sip of, I need a little, another sip of water to cleanse the old palate. Let's taste the chinar on its own, shall we? That's kind of what I love about these live streams, though, is that I like, I have all these plans of what I'm going to do. And then I look at the comments and the plans go out the door and we just have a good old time. And that's really nice. I like that. All right. Chinar on its own. So chinar is uh, artichoke. Uh, it's an artichoke based Amari. Amaro. Yeah, see, so Chinar has that nice bitterness to it. You know, it's got this same kind of sweetness. You've got those herbal notes, but it's really nice and bitter on the finish. I really like it, but it's not its not overly bitter. It's bitter, it's lightly bitter. I wouldn't say that that would be a, uh, a starter uh, Amaro, though, for someone who's just getting into it. I would say like Amaro Chichiaro, uh, Nonino, some of the sweeter ones are going to be better for the, the uh, rookie Amaro people. Well, you're so welcome, Thomas. Okay, now. What do you think? The amazing part is that before I started watching this channel, I was having gin. Now I have all these ingredients thanks to the Educated Barfly. Nice. I'm glad. That's kind of the point, right? I'm really digging this cocktail. Let's talk about this cocktail for a second. Oh, it's, it's really nice. It's got... It's like you get the kind of like you get the gin and a little bit of the ethanol, right? Like right on the front and you get like and the 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 botanicals inside the gin are not lost at all, but they're playing off all of these nice Amaro. Uh, the Fernet Branca is bringing up the bitterness. The Averna kind of almost gives it like a coffee vibe. And with the Chinar, it almost tastes like cola, I want to say. It's really good. I really like it. It's an attractive cocktail. Look at that ice. Can you, have you seen ice clearer than that? That's, and that ice was made with tap water. Just FYI. It does not, just because you have tap water does not mean you're going to get cloudy ice. It has everything to do with the method by which you freeze it, not the water that you use. And I didn't even boil it ahead of time or anything. I literally just filled tap water into a four liter cooler and stuck it in my freezer. And, and that's what you get after about, I let it sit for... I don't know, 16 hours, 16 to 20 hours. Uh, thanks for sharing a lot of the great knowledge and deep lessons about cocktails. Yeah, you're welcome, Danny. Thank you for watching. I'm new as a bartender. This is Dionis. I'm new as a bartender. Uh, a little bit of mixology, gin pink, if you I have. Oh, grapefruit, triple sec, puree. I have to look at that later because I do not know if I ha I don't think I have grapefruit right now. Because of the shutdown, I don't get to go to the uh, the store as much as I'd like to, and so I don't, I can't get a lot of the uh, equipment. Not equipment. That's not what I meant to say. Uh, I don't get, I can't get a lot of the uh, of the uh, ingredients that I want to have to be able to make all these great cocktails. All right, Marius is yelling at me about the specs because I haven't seen. So the specs for this are, uh, well, I'm going to put them in the show notes after the stream is done, but. 
Uh, the specs for this are uh, three eighths of an ounce of uh, Fernet Branca, uh, half an ounce of Averna, one ounce of Chinar, and uh, one and a half ounces of gin. So a very, very boozy cocktail. Very boozy. Uh, very Amaro forward. You're going to really, really need to be an Amaro fan to want to... Uh, to want to, uh, to want to drink this, honestly, but. Yeah, you can use the argon gas to, to uh, spray into your vermouth bottle for sure, Bill. Uh, I know that that works. I don't do it because I go through my vermouth so quickly. I don't have to use the argon gas. It'll be gone in less than a month. Happy to catch the stream. Well, thank you, Rainbow Rats. Nice to see you. Been a long time fan and going to be able to binge watch your videos now that I have lost my bartending job in Australia as we were forced to close. Yes, guess what? I lost my bartending job too. Uh, I've been running these live streams a little bit more, uh, trying to keep busy, focusing on barfly stuff uh, because I have lost my job as well. Our bar shut down and we don't know what's going to happen. No idea how long this is going to take. I don't know if they're going to be able to open again, so... I, we will get through this, though, guys. We will absolutely get through this. Uh, Dagobah Slug Slinger from Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland. It uses ginger syrup. Uh, I, I think I'm going to do a Galaxy's Edge deep dive on this channel at some point because uh, I went there. I drank the drinks. They're pretty good. I got a menu. I think I can reconstruct them. Uh, but I kind of want to reconstruct them the way I want to do them. Just, like, looking at the menu because a lot of the times the menu will be like, passion fruit, citrus juices, and not tell you what it is. And so it's like, kind of like you have to taste it and then it's up to interpretation. And I'll just, I'll just do my interpretation really. Oh, well, thank you, Thomas. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping so, you know, I'm hoping so. We're building this channel and everything. And yeah, ho hopefully it'll offset it. I think, you know, I, you know what? I kind of take it as like a sign that the universe just wants you know, me to go in a different direction maybe. And so, you know, or maybe all of us are, you know, I'm trying to take this as sort of a positive thing, you know, even though it's been really challenging for everybody and, and all the challenges aren't lost on me at all, you know. Uh, thank you. Everybody should keep their head up. All of you guys, you know, and I'm here to try to, I want to try and make this a little bit more entertaining for everybody who needs to be stuck at home at the moment. Uh, so this is pretty good. I like this. This is a, uh, that's a, that's definitely a successful, successful viewer cocktail for sure. I like it. Remove. How long do you think a bottle could last and how do you properly store it? Okay. So this is something that is asked a lot about, like a lot of people don't understand, um, like vermouth and Amaro and like what needs to go in the fridge and what doesn't. And here's basically how you break it down. A lot of these Amaro are just distilled spirits with the maceration of herbs and spices. If that's true, like Chinar, Averna, Fernet, you don't need to put them in the fridge. The ones that need to go in the fridge are the ones that have a wine base because that wine will oxidize over time and go bad. That being said, most vermouth is actually fortified wine, which means that it has a measure of spirits in it. Most often it's brandy, but they can put other different types of spirits in there to sort of fortify the wine. And so it takes a little bit longer to go bad. That said, it will go bad, especially if you leave it outside on a shelf. So you cannot store vermouth the same way that you would the same way that you would store like a spirit. You need to store vermouth in your refrigerator. Uh, it lasts for about. I mean, I've really stretched it to two and a half months sometimes. You know, I mean, you really got to taste it when it's fresh, and then really taste it. You know, kind of keep tasting through it as time goes on, uh, so that you are sure that it's not overly oxidized. When it goes bad, you will know. I mean, like dry vermouth, for instance, tastes like jet fuel when it goes bad. It's really, really not the same thing as when it's fresh. And you want to make sure that it's always chilled before you serve it. So uh, anything that has a, so basically the basic rule of thumb here is anything that has a wine base. That said, you can, st you can dry store Amaro Right? So you can store it outside of the fridge before it's opened because it is vacuum sealed in the bottle. As soon as you open it and you introduce air, it needs to go straight into the fridge. But before you open it, if you just have a bottle that you, know, you just got and you just want to store it and you're not going to use it, you can put that on your shelf. That being said, you don't want to put it in, a, you want to put it in somewhere that's like a cool, dry place. You don't want to put it in a place that has a lot of light. You don't want to put it in a, lot of, a place that gets really hot. 
because that will affect the flavor of the, uh, the wine inside. And that being said, honestly, when we're talking about bourbon, you know, bourbon doesn't go bad because it's a spirit. But for instance, as you drink a bottle of bourbon and you're storing it, the light that gets inside the, the light and then also the air that gets inside that bottle um, will eventually change the flavor of the whiskey. So for instance, if you have something that's open and it's uh, sitting inside a garage where it's getting a lot of light and heat, um, that can dramatically change the flavor. So bourbon doesn't go bad, like it'll never go bad, but it will change flavor. And so you wanna make sure that all of your spirits are kept in a, like properly stored in a place that's shaded and dry uh, you don't want it to be overly moist, um, but especially for vermouth. Now I went on a whole tangent. What else? Any on that same train of Mr. Black, is it overall hard to find? I can't seem to find it anywhere. Uh, well, um, why is, oh, because it's not plugged in. So Mr. Black is a boutique uh, coffee liqueur right now. They're a new company and they are uh, not tough to find, but they're not in every market yet. So they're not like globally, they're not like a globally, like a huge brand globally. Uh, I think right now it's like most of the United States, obviously Australia, because that's where they're from. You can find it in England, I'm pretty sure. Um, but they will add markets as they get bigger and bigger. Ooh, look at that. Thanks so much for all your hard work, Leandro. Thank you, Landon Jones, for, for that super chat and for recognizing the hard work, I guess. You can get Mr. Black in, yeah, you can get Mr. Black in the UK for sure. The, what, what I'm actually kind of irritated about with Mr. Black is that they have an Amaro that they make that you cannot get in the United States. I, I'm friends with the brand ambassador here in Los Angeles and he brought me a taste of the Amaro a couple of weeks ago. Or like, like more like a month ago now, but uh, you can't get that Amaro stateside yet. And it is really, 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 really got, it's a coffee Amaro and it's really good. Uh, if you're in California, Bitters and Bottles sells Mr. Black's chips statewide. Yes, Bitters and Bottles is awesome. Bitters and Bottles is so cool. They're actually in Brisbane, California, which is uh, up by San Francisco. They're so cool that they have a raffle for Pappy Van Winkle bottles and they do not gouge the price. They sell it to you for MSRP. That is not secondary bottle pricing. That is primary bottle pricing. It's pretty awesome. Vucure's uh, Pear Friend 1840s unavailable. I would say any cognac that is VSOP grade or higher uh, is going to be just fine for your Vucure's. Uh, you're not going to be, when, when you're mixing it with other ingredients, you're really not going to be tasting the nuances of the cognac, but anything that's VSOP greater or higher, you're fine. Any, like literally any, any brand. Uh, is Pernod Abs uh, Anise liqueur that same as Absinthe? Okay, so here, let me clear up this thing about Pernod. Okay, so Pernod is an old company that used to, they were, they were the company that was like the most primary company that made Absinthe. Absinthe became illegal, as we all know. It didn't actually become legal until 2007. And so basically, Pernod started making what's called pastis, right? Which is anise-flavored liqueur, right? It doesn't have the wormwood in it. But since 2007, since, you know, absinthe became legal again, they started making a, 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 an expression of Pernod called Pernod Absinthe Superior, and that is real absinthe. And that's what we use on this channel. I've actually never had the uh, pastis in this, on this channel ever. It's always been the thing. But, but because Pernod had been pastis for so long, people think that it's pastis. That being said, it's relatively the same thing. You know, like in, in tiki books, in old tiki books, you're going to see the, the term herb saint, which is like another pastis kind of anise flavored thing that people were using in place of absinthe for uh, various cocktails after um, after uh, uh, the absinthe became illegal. But quite honestly, they make, uh, Perno makes an absinthe. Uh, so it's absinthe superior is what you want to look for. Thank you for what you do. Any recommendations uh, to get, this is Thomas, and thank you for the super chat, my friend. Uh, any recommendations to get into gin? I don't like juniper and botanicals, but I want to like gin. Okay, so here's the thing. First of all, Thomas, I don't think that you, here's my theory, and this is, 
a lot of, this is a theory that a lot of people uh, don't a lot of people take exception with this theory, but I don't think anyone dislikes gin. I don't actually think anyone dislikes juniper. I think that the flavor in there that's actually the most polarizing flavor is the angelica. Angelica is in most gin, and I think that's the most polarizing flavor. That's my theory, anyway. That said, depends on how you're drinking your gin, because the thing is, is that I, I guarantee you that I could, I could get you to like gin in three cocktails. There's like a three cocktail flight that I do at my bar when people have the same problem, um, and I do it, um, like basically going from something that's like kind of sweet and citrusy, uh, to something a little more herbal and then like, a, like a straight up martini. Um, and I get them every single time and I convert them every single time. And I just want to say that, you know, it's not about the brands. Here's the thing. Gin like, like vermouths or something is like a proprietary blend of spices. That being said, they fit into a few different categories. And based on those categories, you can have a good idea of what botanicals are going to be in there and what they're going to taste like. So you've got your London dry gin, which has a very specific style. You've got your Plymouth gin. You've got old Tom gin, uh, which is going to be uh, sweetened a little bit and sometimes barrel aged. Some of it has a little bit of color. Some of it doesn't. Uh, it has sort of this uh, kind of malty and, you know, you get that juniper bite on it, but, um, but you get that juniper bite on it, but it's like light, slightly sweetened and it has kind of barrel flavor to it a little bit. A lot of them do. Uh, that being said, the reason why people think they don't like juniper is because juniper is the most, to be gin, the, the only difference between gin and vodka, that, honestly, is that gin has to be primarily flavored with juniper and then it has the addition of botanicals whereas vodka is just it's new like, like the neutral spirit um and i think a lot of people kind of mistake a lot of the other things that they don't like in it for the juniper because that is the main flavor profile uh but it, i don't think it's much of a like so much a brand that's say if i were going to assign a brand for you i would think that you should try plymouth gin which is not a london dry it's more citrusy in character a little bit less junipery, and the botanicals aren't so intense. So it's like a good starter gin, I think, for most people. It is a different style than London Dry, and it, it, what's kind of confusing about it is that it is a brand, and it is a style, and it is the only existent style in existence, if that makes sense. So basically, like, the Plymouth is a brand, but it's also a style, and it's the only one of its kind. All right, what else do we got here? What else do we got Am I wrong in thinking it's pointless using Old Tom when adding simple syrup? Well, a lot of Old Tom is barrel aged and you're not going to get that. You're not going to get that from just putting simple syrup in gin. So uh, I would say, I don't want to say you're wrong because, you know, everyone has their ideas, but I will say that it's not the same thing. Uh, any recommendations on cocktails to make with VSOP Amber Rum Agricole? Well, first of all, if you're not making tea punch, I don't know what we're doing here, honestly. You should be making tea punch. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else can you do with rum agro? A lot. You can do a lot of stuff with it. There's tons of rum. Rum agro. I mean, like the view, the vu rum agricole is awesome. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, I, I don't know if I have any like on the tip of like, like. I've done some stuff with like the rum clement on this channel, but I like off the top of my brain. For that particular rum, I don't have a suggestion other than just like a tea punch. Uh, what do you, what do you, what drink would you say is a must know for a new bartender? Uh, I think that every single, here's the thing. All new bartenders should strive to learn the classics. You have to learn the classics before you can, you know, improvise on your own. Uh, the classics are the base of everything. So Old Fashioned, Manhattan, Sazerac, Tom Collins, all of these classic drinks that people are going to call, you have to be able to prepare them, like basically spot on, prepare them, and you have to prepare them from memory every time like that and make them perfect. Those are drinks that you have to do. So I, I have this little analogy that doesn't really land on everybody, but I'm going to try it with you guys anyway. I used to be an actor and I would always see these, uh, you know, uh, these companies trying to do like, Shakespeare, but in the, in the style of the Rat Pack. And the thing is, is that most of the time those productions are terrible. And the reason why is because 
To be able to do Shakespeare or like All's Well That Ends Well or Romeo and Juliet in the style of the Rat Pack, you need to have mastered Shakespeare as it was intended, like on its own, the classic Shakespeare. You got to master that first before you add something to it or else it's just meaningless and what you're doing is, isn't going to land right. So classic cocktails, every classic cocktail, you should know them. 50, at least 50 drinks. There's like 50 must know drinks basically. Okay. So what else? Any advice on how to structure a drink menu at home? Is it something, uh, it should have something on it for everyone, but not be cliche. So, uh, that's a big thing. I actually don't think that it should have something for everyone. I think that there should be one of every major style of drink. Uh, I think that you should limit the menu to four unless you want to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars running your bar. Um, and you should, it should just be four cocktails that you know are going to, basically there are cocktails that appeal to different sections of people. So for instance, you know, you're probably going to want to have some aromatic stirred drink, probably a whiskey drink, like an old fashioned or something that's going to hit one group of people are going to really like that. You're going to make sure that you're going to have something that's citrus forward, uh, really pleasing. That is going to hit a certain other group of people. You want something on there for yourself that you really love making, something that you want to, um, something that you want to uh, introduce to other people that you think is really great, um, and then you want something on there that is, I don't know. That's like I like those three categories. I, I don't know. That's it. You got like you got like your aromatic old fashioned. Like, so basically, what I like to do when I make menus is I do like two shaken and two stirred. I do one stirred that's gonna like hit the whiskey people. And then I usually do like another stir that I really like, uh, something that's kind of surprising. Usually I do like a, uh, like an artillery or something. So an artillery would be like a, a little bit of orange bitters and then a 50, 50 mix of sweet vermouth and number three gin. Um, that's sort of like what kind of like my go-to kind of stirred, you know, kind of up something in a coop, something on the rocks. And then I do like two shaken cocktails. Sometimes I have like a tiki bent to one. And then I have something that's really crowd pleasing, like an East side, which is like, Lime, simple syrup, mint, cucumber, and gin. Um, uh, I do that. Uh, I kind of set up for those, like like basically set up for those drinks, you know, so those four drinks. Uh, and then I always say like whatever else I have on hand that's sort of off menu, I can make you. Like if I have ginger syrup and lime and ginger beer, I'll make you Moscow mules or whatever. I'll make you a buck or something. So I can like kind of improvise, you know, kind of within the stuff that I have. That said, you want to limit your ingredients because if you don't limit your ingredients, you're going to spend lots and lots of money and you're going to spend a lot of time fielding uh, lots of weird drink requests. That being said, unless all of your friends are super, super into cocktails, most people, when they go to a party or whatever, they have very low expectations for the bar and then they're just like, oh, I want like a Tito's and soda or something or like a Jack and Coke or they feel intimidated. So I like to print a menu and say, this is what's available. And pretty much this is what's available. That's it. I guess it is you, Marius, or no bitters in my whiskey sour. Do you know if it is possible to get a hoodie designs on shirts by Mover and Shaker? Yes, they do have hoodies uh, for most of their styles, I'm going to say. What else? Yeah, three years, not worth a hassle. I love the seven. I don't know what they're talking about. What are your top three cocktails to drink? You know, honestly, guys, I always disappoint with this question because I don't really have three cocktails that I like. I like a lot of different cocktails. As you can see, most people's complaint about my channel is that there, I don't drink anything I dislike. There's nothing that I'm like, ooh, this is terrible. Or, ooh, I'm trying this for the first time and I hate it. Even most of the viewer cocktails I've gotten have been really, really good. So um, I just really love cocktails. With that being said, I am more partial to aromatic whiskey cocktails like Old Fashions of Manhattan's and Sazerac's. Um, but I do like a good tiki cocktail. I've been really into this whole kind of reconstructing tiki drinks game that's been going on recently. It's been really popular. The bartenders that nail it, they, they nail it. You know what I mean? They really nail it. And uh, drinking those, some of those drinks is just sublime. And recreating them on the channel and being able to drink them is sublime too. I like Amari, but do not have budget or space. Do, okay, so there are a few that you're going to want to have. There are a few, like, like one, like certain Amari that you're going to want to have to make most drinks. Uh, Chinar is one of them. Uh, you want to have Chinar, you want to have Campari. 
Probably, even though you said you don't have space, you want to have Aperol as well. You definitely want Fernet. Uh, Averna is like another uh, is another really popular one that's in a lot of drinks. Uh, and Amaro Nanino is another one. I would probably say there's about five or six that you should have on hand at all times. Uh, something that you should always have in your in your bar. How do I feel about smoked cocktails, and what would you recommend to smoke? Also, where can I get your shirt? One of my favorite cocktails. Need it. This shirt is from Mover and Shaker. So you can get it at Mover and Shaker. I think it's moverandshakerco.com. I don't know. Just Mover and Shaker t-shirts in Google and you'll find it. Uh, yes, this is the, the last word shirt that I love so much. It's really great. I love that company. Uh, they help bartenders. I think they're great. So, And they're always doing like 20% off or 10% off. You can always get a deal there. So uh, definitely go get the shirt. As far as uh, what was the other part of the question I got? I'm going to scroll up a bit. Uh, smoking cocktails. How do I feel about it? I mean, I feel fine about it. I think smoking cocktails is great. Uh, I think that when you smoke a cocktail, you really have to think about what you're making and how that flavor profile of the smoke is going to, uh, is really going to affect your drink and enhance it. You want the smoke to be something that is really not the highlight of the drink, but a nice, uh, you want it to be like a nice note inside the drink. You want to feel that smoke as you drink it, but you don't want it to be overpowering. So, you know, what, what do you smoke? Well, wood chips are something that a lot of people like to do. Uh, I don't know, the aviary will get like these used bourbon barrel staves and they'll like burn the sta the bourbon barrel staves. So that stave, right, that had, it's a bourbon barrel that had bourbon in it, is gonna kind of impart those like flavors of sort of like charred, you know, I'm assuming you're going to get some of those like kind of caramel vanilla notes inside that wood smoke, you know, but it's going to be mostly charred kind of wood smoke flavor. Um, you know, if you're doing that inside an old fashioned, you know, it's really about like kind of picking the right whiskey and, you know, thinking about the other ingredients, but you can smoke anything. I mean, I was even thinking, honestly, I was thinking about taking a little cannabis and just like smoking a cocktail, with a little cannabis. Why not smoke whatever you want? All right, recently purchased a Savoy cocktail book, and this has been a fantastic addition to my library. What other recommendations do you have for classic cocktail books? Okay. Uh, there are a whole slew of classic cocktail books. You should have the, uh, what should you have? What classic cocktail books should you have? Well, obviously, Jerry Thomas's Bobby Vaughn's Guide or How to Mix Drinks is something that's like, put that ice away because it's melting. So, Bon Vivant's Guide or How to Mix Drinks. Um, also, uh, I don't know. There's a whole bunch. There's, uh, I'm trying to think of like uh, uh, Cocktails and Barflies, uh, which is a Harry McElhone book. You should definitely have that. Uh, you know, honestly, Cocktail Kingdom has done a really, really good job of taking old cocktail books and uh, like stuff that's in the public domain and then like like kind of re re like rebinding them and making them really beautiful and making these really nice beautiful editions of these of these cocktail books you should definitely check that out the flowing bowl is another one that's really really good here's how is another one that's really really good uh last comment leandra scroll up to the last comment wow leandra scroll up scroll up joaquin to go in we just did a cocktail with red wine, JFK Harris. Okay, which comment are we talking about, Marius? Scroll up to the last green comment. Glad, do you know of any plum liqueurs you would recommend? Not plum wine or slovivivits. They literally do not exist in Oregon, and I have to make and I've had to make my own. I, honestly, brother, I don't know. I don't really know. I haven't used any plum liqueur. I would think that maybe Clear Creek might make one, maybe, possibly Clear Creek, but I don't know. I don't really know. I have not used plum liqueur for anything. And the, the other thing is like, are we talking about like plum liqueur? Or are we talking like plum U to V, which is going to be like, so it's like, are we talking about like a brandy based liqueur that has plums macerated into it? Or are we talking about like straight up like plums inside uh, neutral grain spirit. I, I would think Clear Creek, and I, I want to think they're. I think they're a they're a company from Oregon. That being said, I mean that's that's that is a like a very 
That's a very uh, obscure ingredient that I don't really know that much about and I've never used. So I'm going to be honest there. I wish I could tell you. I wish I really, I really wish I could tell you. Jeff, I think it's Clear Creek. Yeah, Clear Creek, yeah. I think it's Clear Creek that makes a plum one. And yeah, everyone's asking the same thing. U to V or is it U to V or is it Brandy base? But I think, I think, that, I think that Clear Creek makes a, a plum U to V, I want to I wanna say. Hey, love your videos, and I've always wanted to ask since I was in college, what is good? You know, the problem with drinking does blue plum brandy. Well, there you go. Kid Dynamite, in for the win. Marius, getting Leandra to stop talking is hard to get you to put bitters in your... <laughs> That's so funny. You know what? I do talk a lot, but you guys benefit from it, so... <laughs> Uh, what else? Lots of, okay, what else? What else? I don't know, guys. What's the next drink you have up for tonight? Let's do it. You know what? You are, I actually have two more, Robert, and one of them is yours. Let's do your drink. So, Senor Robert from, is it Dubuck? Dubuck? Is it Dubuck, Iowa? Dubuck? How do you pronounce it? So Robert, uh, we made some habanero shrub. Uh, shrubs are something that I've been thinking about, talking about for a very long time on the channel. I'm gonna, well, I, guess we'll, I don't want to get too drunk because I want to be able to, to do this for you, but shrubs are something that I want to talk about a lot on the channel. I'm going to give you a little primer on shrubs right now just so you guys know what it is. Um, Robert, I am going to have to look up the specs on this. Um, Dubweki? Dubweki? No. Dubweki? Dubweki? Am I saying Dubweki? Am I saying that right? No. Dubweki. All right. Well, Dubweki. All right. So shrubs. Let's talk about shrubs. We made a mango habanero shrub. This was uh, a, this is a beautiful ingredient uh, by Mr. Uh, Robert. Uh, who sent me the uh, the specs for this cocktail that he does at his at his at his bar in Dubuque, Iowa? Um, anyway, uh, Dubuka. Okay, Dubuka. Dubuka. I really hope that you're writing this out right. <laughs> anyway, uh, so mango habanero shrub. So what is a shrub? A shrub is a, an old ingredient from the colonial era uh, that basically uses um, fruit sugar and uh, vinegar to make a uh, base that you can add to water or uh, soda and kind of make a nice kind of like natural soda out of, I guess. Um, it is a way that farmers used to uh, preserve their summer fruit um, because, you know, obviously the summer fruit is going to go bad. So what better way to preserve it than to make cham and then also to make shrub. Um, the vinegar as a preservative it lasts for quite a long time. This is wonderful. We made it with an immersion circulator, which is something that we should talk about at some point. I have to pick, oh, well, hold on. I got a super chat and I got to look at it. Kyle Goddard says, can you peel citrus and keep peel for twists? Is there a way to save peels in a pandemic rationing? Okay, so here's the deal. With peeling your citrus, you cannot, it's like this. You can peel an entire fruit let's say an uh, orange or a lemon and put it in a cup and put like a damp paper towel in there to sort of keep it moist. The thing about a peel is that when you peel it, it immediately starts to dry and uh, the citrus oil will start to dry. So you cannot preserve them in the fridge uh, and have them then zest oil onto your cocktail. You just can't do it. You need it from a fresh fruit. And that's where we're in kind of dire straits in this pandemic. You can't, pan you can't ration it in a pandemic kind of way. Uh, tea is good to add to homemade sugar syrup. Put a couple of tea bags in a pot and bring it to a boil and add sugar. Yeah, I do that all the time. I actually brought out on my, I had a disaster of a live stream happen two days ago. And during that disaster of a live stream, I had some, uh, I had some green tea syrup that I made, which is really, really good. I was going to use it in a cocktail, but nobody wanted me to. I think plum liqueurs just aren't really a thing. I mean, they are a thing, 
but they're not used very often. All right, let's make this, uh, let's look up Robert's specs. So uh, we went back and forth about the name of this drink. He wanted to call it Oaxacan on Fire. Is that what it was? Oaxacan on Fire? And let's see, Robert. Memoria Co. There you go. There we go. So let's look up the... All right, so I'm not doing the salt. I did, just didn't get it together enough to do the salt. But I'm interested to taste this cocktail. All right, just going up to the specs. Give me four points. Two habaneros. Hold on, guys. Let me find the specs here. All right. Oh, mezcal. All right, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the stream. Marius is gonna entertain you. I'm gonna go get mezcal because I forgot it. Uh, mezcal, shrub, and lime. I'm just gonna go run and get the mezcal real quick, and I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. All right, let's get this mezcal. Let's get this party started. All right, hey, let's get our, uh... here we go, Robert. Let's see what this cocktail is all about. All right, so what do we need? We need a lime, we need a citrus juicer. Half an ounce of lime. You can mess around with it. Don't you? Let's just let's try your specs first. So, I'm telling you guys, I don't know what I'm going to be doing when these live streams when I don't have any more citrus. All right, half an ounce of lime. And we're doing one ounce of the habanero shrub. One and a half ounces of mezcal. Get us some ice out of the fridge. Look at this. This piece of ice. All right. Ah, just dropped most of it on the ground. <laughs> See how this goes.
make sure I did that right, got everything right. Right, so here we go. Good taste. I did not double strain, so it's gonna have to be dispatched quickly. Oh, that's good. All right, guys. So this mango habanero shrub, we did it with an immersion circulator. Basically, what we did was we took 500 grams of um, 500 grams of like fresh mango, 500 grams of sugar three quarters of a cup of uh, apple cider vinegar, and then we did two habaneros. We did one that we cut and seeded, and then one with the seeds in. Uh, and we put that with, we put that in a sous vide, right? So if you guys don't know what an immersion circulator is, it's like a little tube that you put inside uh, a, like basically like a uh, bucket of water, or like, a, not a bucket, but like, you get like a, a big pan, right? You fill it with water, you put your immersion circulator in there, you set it to a temperature, and it circulates water and heats the temperature to an even temperature that will stay that temperature the whole time. So what we did is we uh, put everything, you put everything into a plastic bag, you vacuum seal a bag, you put it inside the water, we set the water to 140 degrees for four hours. Uh, and it's a really good way of like making bitters because you can rapidly, you can rapidly, um, you can rapidly uh, uh, age bitters, basically. So like bitters, usually when you make bitters, you have to let it sit for months and months and months. But if you're using immersion circulator, you can speed up the process. Uh, so that's how we made the syrup. And it's just half an ounce of lime, which is a nice, a nice amount of citrus. It's got, I'm using the Lopez Real Mezcal, which is gonna be uh, a bunch of, it's gonna have a bunch of citrus in its flavor profile, but it's, it's slightly smoky. good. Ooh, that is really, really good. No, it's honestly, Robert, I don't think that I would mess with this at all. What's funny about this is that you look at it and it does not look like what, it does not, like when you look at this, you don't, you're going to say, this is going to taste like this like mango-y, spicy kind of drink. It's really, really nice. It's a nice presentation. It's nice. It's beautiful. I love it. It's, it hits all the things. You got spicy. It's a little bit sweet. You get that nice bite of citrus and you got the smoke from the uh, mezcal. It's great. I love it. I wouldn't do anything to it. I'm just going to drink it. This is really comparable to Vita. So uh, I usually use Vita as well. I have a bottle of Vita. I thought that this would go really nicely with it though. And uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's interchangeable with Vita's a little bit differently, but it's a little bit different, but it's pretty good. Uh, it's in that same range though. Ooh, making sanitizer from orange bitters. I love that all these distilleries are making sanitizer and pitching in for the effort. Talk about understanding how to read the back of a bottle better, produced versus bottled versus distilled, etc. Well, that's hard, kind of hard to speak to because I'm not sure that there's a lot of regulation as to like what goes on a bottle. Like, you know, so um, all of those things mean different things. Uh, it's not something that I really take into consideration that much when I buy things because I usually do a bunch of research on it to figure out where that spirit is coming from anyway. So when I look at a back, I don't usually look at the back of a bottle uh, that much, that often. Sometimes I do. But for instance, like I know that uh, Lopez Real Mezcal is made by one family and one family alone. Uh, but the thing is, is that every, there are a lot of vague, there aren't any regulations about what you put on a, a, and they're on, on, a, on a label and there's a lot of vague legal terms. So anyone can pretty much put anything on a bottle unless there are something like bourbon or something where that, that has laws in which they have to follow very specific kind of guidelines about what is what in the bottle. Talk about stirred versus shaken. How does it affect the cocktail? Well, I mean, this is like a, you know, it's like one of those double-edged sword sort of Subjects. The thing is, is that the, 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 the main idea behind it is that uh, you stir a cocktail that is, uh, that has a lot of liquor. There's like, sorry, I've been drinking. 
basically, you stir a cocktail that is basically comprised mainly of liquor. And the reason why you do that is because most of the things are of the same density or similar to that density. It's easy. You just need a little stir. Something like sugar, citrus, and, and booze, though, has uh, different densities that are harder to combine. And so it needs a more rapid sort of shake. That being said, when you shake things as well, you add more dilution to them than when you stir them. Or more dilution, more or dilution more quickly, more dilution more quickly than you would when you stir them. So uh, that also is something to take into consideration uh, about shaking, shaking and stirring. Have you ever made a drink with kimchi? No, I've never made a drink with kimchi. I've never heard of a drink being made with kimchi. I'm sure there's some enterprising bartender that has done well though at this point. What makes the ice knife so much better than using a regular knife? Uh, I mean, it's just really about sharpness. Uh, you know, there are certain knives that are just kept at a certain sharpness. And if you're using like a very, very sharp knife, uh, I'm sure that it is comparable to an ice knife. I think that an ice knife also is made out of specific steel. Uh, there are different grades of steel that are different hardness. And uh, I think that has something to do with it. I don't really know, you know everything behind that so it's kind of hard for me to speak to but I always get a better result when I do something like this it's also just like I mean if there is a knife that is made for something particularly there's usually a reason behind it what are your thoughts on fat washing do you have a favorite ingredient to fat wash with I had an excellent Sazerac made with duck fat washed whiskey and got me interested in trying it uh, I love fat washing. I think fat washing is wonderful and you can do it with a variety of different things. Basically anything that has a really high fat content, you can basically use to fat wash. Uh, fat freezes and so you can basically impart the flavor profile and take it out of a drink. Uh, we have a upcoming video coming up all about uh, fat washing. So uh, definitely check it out. And, um, and uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what to speak to as far as fat washing is concerned. I, I do it a lot. So for instance, when I want to do coconut rum, I usually just fat wash coconut oil into a rum to get that coconut flavor. There's no point in doing something like Malibu or something where you can just make something uh, fresh and original. I've never had duck fat. I definitely have had an Benton's Old Fashioned, which is made with Benton's bacon uh, and done like a bacon fat wash bourbon. We have a video coming up on it. So yeah, no, I love it. I think fat washing is great. It's a really good way to put, to, to affect cocktails in a kind of simple way. The knife is folded. Ice knife is folded 1000 times. Damascus steel, best for cutting hard water. There you go. Love it. See someone, someone out there knows more than me. And I love that. That's wonderful. Finally, fat washing video, not done by cocktail cameras. He's good, but not as frequent posting as excellent. Cool. Well, I have a Benton's Old Fashioned video coming out in a couple of days. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that we did for Patreon that was only for Patreon for a while. Now that we're here and Marius and I cannot get together on a regular basis and shoot because of the COVID-19 uh, crisis, health crisis, um, we are releasing some of those episodes to keep our schedule uh, for the next couple of months. And uh, it has a Benton's, it has a, we act, we're actually having a conversation about it before I, before we started live streaming. Uh, yes, we talk every single day and not only that, but we are constantly working on, uh, how better to, I guess just how, how to make better videos and kind of what you guys want to see. So, you know, honestly, don't be afraid to email us and say, Hey, I want to see this or I want to see that. Uh, I am going to be having a little bit more time to do this, you know, now. So, uh, we want to make use of that time and really, uh, you know, kind of dial things in on this channel. 13 years ago, it's like 15 years ago, but you know, who's counting at this point? God, Robert, I love this drink. Hats off to you. I can see why it's a crowd pleaser. The only thing I would do to this is maybe add some bitters to it to sort of cut the sweetness a little bit because the, the shrub is a little bit sweet. And that doesn't bother me because the shrub alone is really good. I love it. Because we're not using a lengthener in here, I think it would be really nice to maybe add a few dashes of some type of bitters. I could see celery bitters going just phenomenally in this, by the way. Just FYI. I'm glad your consistency and quality hasn't slowed down. Well, thank you, Roy. I really appreciate that, man. 
you know, I don't know. Uh, we like we look at our you know we we look at everything and how it's going, and we really try to you know figure out like what people want. I don't, I'm not really interested in like what's trending on YouTube. I'm more interested in like what you guys that are watching these videos want to see. What you guys would get the most use out of. Darren Orange, the educated butterfly. You guys should do a remote drink off with Greg. Shared live stream. You know, I think that's a fuck freaking great idea. I think that is a great idea. I love Greg. Uh, we we visited him last year and we had a lot of fun. And we did a little we did a little uh, 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 collaborative video together. I had so much fun on that, and I would love to do that. Yeah, Leandro said he's in a live stream some days ago that he wanted to play GTA with Greg. I want to do that too. And Greg got back to me and said, I would love to do that. And we just haven't really moved forward, but I would love to do a live stream where Greg and I play Grand Theft Auto five. And we just sort of, I don't know, do whatever we do online. Uh, I've also been playing with the idea of doing sort of like a drunk game stream where I like, this is my idea. You tell me if it's a good idea. I was thinking that maybe I would get some viewers to uh, submit a cocktail. I'd pick the cocktail and then I'd make the cocktail and I'd drink the cocktail and play a game, whatever game it is, whatever game. I might even let the viewers decide what the game is. And then we just play the game and just sort of do a game stream, kind of like drunken gaming. We definitely want to support you guys doing more videos and live streams. They are helping us get through this crazy time. Chris Twiggs. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. We definitely want to do more live streams and definitely want to do more uh, videos because it's helping us get through this crazy time too. You know, uh, I think that we should all band together. You know, in this time because it's 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 unprecedented in history. It's crazy. My kids' kids will be will be learning about this in school. You know, uh, drunk plus stream is always a good idea. I don't know. I'm a little bit drunk now, and I feel like I'm like. Losing my thought process a little bit as I'm talking to you guys. It's got to be Mario Kart. The only time... I kind of feel like Mario Kart would make me vomit if I was drunk, though. Like, it's, that's just, like, too many fast-moving things, you know? I want something that's going to... It would be nice to play a game that just makes me... That makes me just... Just make a whole bunch of bad decisions, you know? Like, in the game. I would like that. That would be fun. <laughs> Greetings from Chile. I love your videos. I've learned a lot. Thanks. Hey, Alonzo, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Even more so if drunk gaming is done in multiplayer and viewers could lobby against you. Dude, what would even be better is like if I did GTA Online, you guys could join me in the game. Whoever had GTA and was playing it on a PC could join me in the game and we could like do heists together and stuff. It would be so much fun. Everyone could make the cocktail and we would all be drinking the cocktail of choice and then playing GTA together and then I would be live streaming it on, I don't know, whatever. Twitch or, I'd, or I would be like live streaming on Twitch or I would like, or I would like record it and then like put it out as a video. That would be fun as hell. That would be so much fun. And like if all of you guys, so it was just like, cause in GTA, like if you want to pull off a heist, I think you got to pull together a crew. So the thing is, is that like, like whoever just logged in first and it's just like part of my crew, right? And then we could just play together. That'd be fun. I think it'd be a lot of fun. American truck simulator plus drunk equals Leandro driving on the wrong side of the road, delivering electronics in Nevada. <laughs> that sounds awesome. What else? What's everyone drinking? Just made a New York flip. Nice. A New York flip is good. Uh, I'm drinking... Um, what did we decide this name, the name was, like, what did you say the name was this? So, Robert wanted to call this Oaxacan on Fire, but I think the actual name is uh, White Heat, right? Is it White Heat? Is that right? Daiquiri, for sure. Oh, Gimlet, I mean, a Gimlet is a gin daiquiri, so. White Heat, yes, that's right, Robert. Yeah, I love this. Yeah, it's good. Well, you don't have to make me this when I come visit you in Dubuque, Iowa. Um, I really like this a lot. This is a good one. The more it dilutes, the smoother it gets, a little bit less sweet. It's really nice. It's really nice. It, it, it evolves very nicely. What else we got?
<laughs> what else? My last drink of the evening was a bastardized Red Hook. Use scotch. Oh, I like that. Instead of rye. Green chartreuse instead of maraschino. That's nice. Ooh, that sounds good. Ooh, bitter bee. Yeah, I like the bitter bee. It's a good drink. What's the average volume of a cocktail pour? Uh, well, you mean like... All right, Colin, what do you mean average volume of a cocktail pour? Does that mean like all the ingredients that make a cocktail or like main spirit only? Tell me and I'll tell you what the, the average volume is. If it's a full-on cocktail, average volume is three ounces. Maybe a little bit more than that. Depends. Depends. Usually you're getting two ounces of spirit in that. It's a happy birthday. Happy birthday to... Happy birthday to Jared. 1.5 aquavit, so lime, ginger liqueur, and pastis, and lime juice. Hmm, not bad. I kind of like that. Didn't have much in my cabinet, so I'm making a crane woman. What's a crane woman? Casey Jenkins, please tell me what a crane woman is. Dry shake with ice, really hard for 20 to 30 seconds, and be sure there's no yellow part of the egg. Well, if you get a little bit of the, here's the thing, the yellow part of the egg, it's got a lot of proteins in it and it will break down the foam. So you don't want to have that in your, but if you have a little tiny blip of yellow, it's not going to matter. And then shake with the big rock. I don't know. Our resident whiskey sour expert is obviously Marius. So any, I, any questions? on a whiskey sour should be uh, directed toward him. For sure, he is the guy. He's the one that's gonna tell you all about the whiskey sour. Maduro simple syrup is in a cocktail. Maduro simple syrup. Is Maduro syrup stupid in a cocktail? I have not, I don't think anything. I don't think anything is stupid in a cocktail, except for maybe the can from a, the, the, the juice from a can of tuna might be stupid in a cocktail, but that actually might work depending on what the flavor is. I'd have to try the syrup, though, to be able to tell you if it's good or not. Dash of lime, four ounce of cranberry juice, lime wheel garnish. So you're teaching us how to make a vodka cranberry? Marius needs to do more videos. Marius has done more videos, Dark Fairy. Do you guys really think we just filmed one video with Marius? Don't you guys want to see him epically fail a cocktail? Well, you may just get to see that. Can you sometimes do a video describing different types of rums? Yes, but here's the thing about rums. Rum is sort of my weak spot. I am a whiskey gin guy. I've always been a whiskey gin guy and uh, rums are something that I have the utmost respect for and I've gotten really deep and nerdy about it in the last few years or the last year or so. But it's not something that I know a ton about and there's no standardized system. There's no like very cut and dried system of laws in place for rum and so it's a very sort of out there kind of thing, you know? It's like a very sort of like, there's a lot of different ideas on things. There's a lot of different rules and like basically the rules change for which island the rum comes from. There's nothing standardized. And so I've kind of stayed away from it, you know, just doing like a thing on it. But I have been writing an episode where we're talking about spirit. The thing is, is that before this whole COVID-19 thing happened, Marius and I started writing episodes where we're going to do a little bit more um, spirits education. And that is like on the top of the list is doing a rum, rum episode. Uh, it's just that it's something that I've shied away from just because I want to make sure that all my facts are correct and that all of the information that I'm giving you is good information. So that, uh, and it's, and it is kind of my weak point. I know a bit about rum, but I don't know everything about rum. And I kind of want to know everything about rum before I do something like that. Hey, Leonardo, do you have a, any variations in your back pocket? Well, hold on, I want to read that. In your back pocket, on the penicillin. I have a lot of Isla Scotch bottles. Was curious to blend in scotches. So I do have in my back pocket the, the uh, like a, a, a variation of penicillin, but not with scotch. 
So I would think that when you were doing a variation on something, you would be changing the major, the, the main flavor profile. So the, the back pocket penicillin variation that I have is called a uh, Medicina Latina, and it's basically a penicillin, but instead of lemon, you use lime. Instead of scotch, you will instead of uh, like basically instead of uh, scotch and Isla scotch or like blended scotch and Isla scotch, you use uh, tequila, you use just like Blanco tequila and then like a flood of escal on top and it's, it's phenomenally good cocktail. Apple crisp cocktail, Holland Jennifer, honey, honey syrup and lime juice, unless there's a name for it already. I don't think there's a name for that yet. I don't know, just like a, it's a sour basically. Uh, you know what, Marius? You're not strawberry blonde. Sorry, buddy. You're just straight up blonde. What's the difference between an on spec cocktail and a great? I don't, I'm not sure what that means. On spec and great cocktail. Can you, Kyle? Can you please uh, shed a little light on that comment? Because I don't know what that means. What's the difference between a between an on spec cocktail and a great cocktail? Well, like an on, like I don't, I'm not sure what that means. So, clarify and I'll answer it. I think I'm new to the channel and new to home bartending. I was wondering how you do, how you get into bartending. What have you, what, what gave you the passion you have today? Well, I mean, honestly, I kind of learned the passion to tell you guys the honestly God truth. I was an actor and I became a bartender. I started working in the bar world so that I could have my days free to audition. That was really how I got into this business. Uh, I grew to have a passion for it by working with some great mentors. And what I always say to people who want to work behind a bar is that, A, I hope you're not starting as a bartender. You really should be starting as a bar back, working for the bartenders, doing that support job, and really learning the bar from the ground up. After you've done that bar back job and you've graduated to a bartender, I think that you need to really think about what kind of bartender you want to be because there's a lot of different styles of bartenders, whether you want to be a cocktail bartender or whether you want to work in a sports bar and do like shots and beers. I don't think that there's any like shame in doing that, but it just really depends on like, you know, like for instance, like doing high end cocktails, your tips and the money that you make, it kind of goes down a little bit. A lot of people think that bartending is just like a ton of money all the time. And that could be true if you're working in nightclubs or places where you turn and burn clients. But like, honestly, like in a cocktail bar, you're not really making a ton of money, but you're kind of doing this artistic endeavor. And it just really kind of depends on what you want to do and how you want to like where you want to go in the career. And then when you finally figure out, like when you finally figure out like how, what you want to do and what you want to get out of the career, then you've got to find yourself some great mentors. So I had some great mentors that I worked under. I basically sought out different bartenders running programs that I really respected and I went and worked under them and I did everything that they said and I tried to learn as much as possible from them. And that is really how you do it. That being said, I learned a lot about the history of cocktails and stuff by reading and it's been a passion of mine because it's just purely a passion of mine. It's not like I tried for this passion. It just is a passion. I just really like it. I think it's great. I love history. I love how you can trace all of almost all of human history through drinking and it says something about us and like where we've been and maybe where we're going. I don't know. That that's that's how I, I say that. I guess that's how I answer that. I can measure ingredients. Kyle Goddard says I can measure ingredients and follow directions. What separates a cocktail that follows a recipe and one that you say, wow, that's a great cocktail. Well, <laughs> This is what I try to teach on this channel. This is exactly what I'm trying to teach on this channel. Anyone can follow a recipe. The thing is, is that the devil is in the details, as they say. And really, it's technique that separates something that is just a recipe that you follow to something that is just like someone says, wow, that's a great cocktail, you know. And that has everything to do with like double straining your cocktails. I mean, just like all of these different little touches and that's what I try to teach on this channel. This channel is not really about recipes. I do a lot of recipes on this, on this channel, obviously. You're going to know the recipe. But what I really try to impart is technique. You know, like uh, letting egg white sit in the tin for 10 seconds before you start shaking dry so that you're kind of letting the citrus go to work on the egg white. Stuff like that. You know, these little like extra added touches that you can do or like holding your 
peel up here and not right down here. So lots of little things that you can do that make that go a long way to making it a great drink that is all about the technique that you're employing as opposed to just the recipe that you're following. I would love to see you make a cocktail called Unfaithful from the bar Curfew in Copenhagen, one of my favorite cocktail bars. What's in it though, Fire? Tell me what's in it and I'll tell you and I'll I'll see if I can't make it. Second question, could you do some boozy ice cream floats on this channel? Yes, I can and I will. I don't know if I'll do ice cream floats or if I'll just do straight up ice cream cocktails, but it will happen. Dizzy Oaxacan, one and a half mezcal, three quarters Averna, half grapefruit, half lemon, quarter simple, and then three, I'm assuming ounces ginger beer. Super crushable, sounds good. Yeah, that sounds really good actually. It's like a uh, kind of like a mashup of a Moscow mule and a Paloma. That's what that sounds like. Watch on that how to use Jägermeister style video, but for Di Serrano. Also, still waiting on that how to use Jägermeister style video, but for Di Serrano. Yes. I don't even really use Di Serrano, though. I use uh, Lazzaroni Amaretto. That being said, you can sub in your Di Serrano if you'd like, and I will do an Amaretto cocktails. There's, there's less amaretto cocktails out there than there are for something like yellow chartreuse or green chartreuse, but that doesn't mean that I can't make a video on it. I absolutely will. What else? I was looking for, I was looking to experiment with Malta in a cocktail. I'm not sure. What is Malta? What is Malta? Tell me what it is. I'm not familiar with that. Any cocktail recommendations for Contrato? Yes. I do have some cocktail recommendations, but you're going to have to wait. But yes, I do. Yeah, you'll be seeing that in some videos coming up, for sure. Zhao, just got here. What are we drinking? Well, I was drinking this thing. It was, uh, uh, it's called a White Heat. It's an ounce and a half of mezcal uh, and an ounce of a, a habanero uh, mango uh, shrub and a little, little lime juice. That's really good. The question is, what are you drinking, my man? What are you drinking? Unfaithful, 5CL Hendrix, gin, sliced cucumber, Cointreau, fresh squeezed lemon juice, honey, that sounds good. Danish raw licorice powder. Ooh, that sounds good. Malta is basically barley soda, like unfermented beer. Ooh, I have to try it. I cannot say unless I try it. Someone texted me. Uh, I can't say anything about anything unless I try it. Unless I'm like intimately familiar with the ingredient. What else we got? Favorite ginger drinks. My favorite ginger drink is called a buck. I do a half an ounce of lime, three quarters of an ounce of ginger syrup, two ounces of any spirit you want, ice, and soda on top. Boom. Shake it, strain it, soda on top. That is it. Any thoughts on fat washing? More trouble than it's worth? Once I learned about it, I mean, we, we talked about fat washing in this video already. I don't think that it's more trouble than it's worth. I think that fat washing is great, and I love doing it. So when I do, like, I don't know, I already said this, but... Coconut rum, I do a, like a coconut oil fat wash to make that. If I want to riff on a last word, what style of liqueur should I be replacing the green chartreuse with? Well, it just depends on what you want to do with it. I mean, that liqueur is going to be, be that liqueur is going to be chosen by all the different ingredients that you're going to put on the last word. Basically, a paper plane is a, is a riff on a last word. Uh, and they use, uh, what do they use? They use Donino for their like Amaro or the liqueur. So I think that you really got to find out like what the other ingredients are and figure it out from there. And that said, if you're going to get stuck on that, I think that looking for inspiration somewhere, kind of anywhere really, like you're just finding the inspiration, like whether it's a flavor or whether it's a memory or whether it's a smell and kind of building off that might give you a good way to go on that one. St. George, okay, I'm just getting... Mixed and soaked overnight, chopped cucumbers, strawberries, basil. Could you do some variation on a Pim's cup for your channel? A place? Yeah, actually, I actually have a house-made Pim's uh, recipe where you can actually do like a Pim's number five. So a lot of people don't realize about Pim's is that they are assigned numbers, and each number has a different spirit base uh, with a macer with a maceration of different uh, uh, herbs and spices into that spirit base. So number one is gin. Obviously, we know that. But there were, there were, I think, six or nine different PIMs. 
expressions. Uh, number five was rye whiskey, and we have a really, really, really good one at Kohl's. So I, I will probably teach you that at some point. But yeah, I love Pimses and I love different Pims. Pims is something that's like infinitely, it's like the, each different expression. Like everyone can make their own Pims, and there's lots of different ways to sort of go about how you make your Pims. There are a lot of people that say this is the right way or whatever, but honestly, I don't really subscribe to that idea that there's a right way or a wrong way. I just think that like there are a lot of great variations on that drink out there and there a lot of them are very good. Some of them are bad, some of them are good, but you can kind of do whatever you want with that drink. Uh, it is kind of left for interpretation, I would say. Derek Hansen, I think he likes Pierre Ferrand. Uh, I mean, I like Pierre Ferrand cognac. I do, yeah. But uh, I also like Hein cognac. There's a bunch of other cognacs that I like. And that is one of them. How to Drink created a last word variation with a viewer the other day on his stream. The Wyatt word. 0.5 lime, 0.5 grapefruit, 1.5 beef eater, 0.5 St. Germain, 0.5 yellow shirt. Sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. I like that. Thomas Larson, let's talk wash lines. What ounce sizes are needed for home bar to cover most drinks? This is what I'll say. This is what I'll say. You're going to need a couple of different uh, glass glasses. You want to have a five ounce Nicanor. You want to have a five and a half ounce coupe. You want to have a, a double old fashioned that's at least 12 ounces, something like this, right? Uh, especially for crushed ice cocktails, you're going to need a higher volume glass. A lot of people say, oh, that drink is 95% ice. They don't know what they're talking about. You want to pack crushed ice cocktails in crushed ice to control the dilution and make sure you don't get a lot. So you're going to definitely need uh, something that's at least 12 ounces, 12 to 13 ounce uh, double old fashioned. You're going to want to have some neat glasses. Uh, what else do you want to have? You want to have a 16 ounce Collins glass. You want to have a 12 ounce Collins glass. Um, I don't know what else. I mean, like, honestly, I always kind of find like all of these like weird, like little, you know, this is like a nine ounce glass that I really like a lot. I found this coupe right here. I think this is six ounces and it's really nice. You're gonna want to have a six ounce coupe. Uh, this right here is a seven ounce footed, footed, uh, uh, footed rocks glass, which I use quite a bit, but I'm always using different things. Obviously here's my five ounce Nick and Nora. Um, you know, right here, I think this is nine, nine ounces. This is a nine ounce uh, daiquiri glass that I'm going to be using in an episode pretty soon. Uh, you like, I, here's another old fashioned glass. This is more like 12 ounces and it's got like a nice pattern on it. Um, you know, glassware is important. It's really important. You know, you want to have something that's really, uh, let's see what Marius, Marius is common to look at. Resolution Buck, yeah. Does what drink curdle? Copycat, yeah, of course. Stuck doing uni work for my master's degree. Huh. Looks like I'll have to pick up some more glassware. Only thing fancy I have is old fashioned glass I picked up for 150 each, yes. Pick up cheap glassware though. I always go to like secondhand stores and pick up glassware all the time. You can find some really great vintage stuff for super, super cheap. What's next up for the Marius to make for us all? What do you think? What's up for Marius? I don't know. Why don't you guys vote on something that you will want Marius to make for you and, well, and I'll get him to make it. What do you guys want to see Marius make? That's the question. With Bailey's and Coke. Hmm, interesting. I wonder how that would taste. What time is it? Oh, it's already nine o'clock. Well, guys, we've been doing this live stream for an hour and a half. It's pretty good. I like it. Would love for you, your opinion on a drink, two ounce screwball, a screwball peanut butter whiskey. Is that what it is? Bailey's, Frangelico, and four ounces of Coca-Cola, single strain. So here's the thing, I'm not a huge fan of, um, of Frangelico, I'm wondering if the Coca-Cola is gonna wash all that stuff out and you'd be better suited with like a Coke syrup and maybe soda maybe or something? Or like, so you can control the amount of cola flavor? I don't know, I'd have to try it, it sounds interesting. An old fashioned Ramos Gin Fizz. Ooh, oh yes! Should we get Marius to make a Ramos Gin Fizz next? 
We should get Marius to make a Ramos Gym Fizz. Absolutely, 100%. That would be amazing. Amazing. I might, I, like, I was playing with the idea, I was talking to Marius today about doing a segment called Leandro Teaches Marius Everything He Knows. So basically, I'll teach something to Marius. We'll wait a couple of days, and then Marius will make it at home for you. But a, a Ramos Gym Fizz would be amazing. How amazing of a video would that be? Oh, that's not true, Marius. That's not true. I have a new... Here's the thing. The Ramos Gym Fizz, like, getting that head up like that is a little bit of my Achilles heel. I found a way around it. Uh, we haven't shot the video yet, but I, I want to do a reconsidering the Ramos um, uh, video, for sure. But we should absolutely have Marius make a Ramos. I couldn't think of anything that's more technically difficult than making a Ramos Gym Fizz. I don't know if I have all the stuff, dude. I don't think I have heavy cream in my fridge. Hold on. You want me to show you how to make a Ramos Gym Fizz? Do I have the stuff? Oh, I have heavy cream. All right. You know what, guys? You know what, guys? I have the... I, 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 I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. We're doing this. Marius is going to have to entertain you because I'm going to have to do a little prepping. But uh, we're going to make a Ramos Gym Fizz. And... Uh, and uh, we're gonna do this, all right, guys? We're gonna do this. Now put this away. All right, let's make the rums. Let's see this new technique that Leandro has. I might be failing in front of all of you guys right now, but that's okay. I don't mind. Bartending is a process. No head, no glory. That's true, man. That's so true. And it's been a while since I've done this too. This is not something that I've uh, that I've uh, that I've really practiced that much lately. So you know, we'll see how this goes. Everything has got to be super cold. All right, let's get this party started. All right, so I'm gonna let this glass, I put a Collins glass inside the freezer. I'm gonna let it chill there for like a second. Hold on, I'm gonna let it chill there for a little second. Ooh, somebody made a bitter beer today. Professional development of the educated bar fly, exactly. <laughs> Looking at all of these uh, Instagram posts that you guys, uh, that you guys have tagged me in. Hold on, but I gotta look something up now as well. the gin out so we're good Cool. Uh, I do need to go get one thing though, so I'm gonna have to go get the orange flower water from the garage. I'll be right back. Yeah, where's the simple syrup?
right, and we're back. And we're gonna be using some fresh squeezed citrus. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. We're gonna do this. All right, what we got? Steve the bartender. What time is it down there? You should do a combined stream one of these days. That would be awesome. Steve the bartender on here right now? Steve the bartender, if you are on here, make a comment. Damn cocktail celebrities. <laughs> Cocktail celebrity. I don't know if I don't know if that's the is that the thing? Is cocktail celebrity a thing? That's right. Then you just get Greg to pop them. There's the Holy Trinity right there. Booyah. Steve the 3 p.m. Yeah, for sure. I'm a bit hesitant about going live. I love the fact that I can edit. Come on, Steve. You and me. Mono a mano. You know what I mean? Let's do it. Let's do some live streams together. That would be fantastic. I mean, yeah, you know, you might get drunk and make an ass of yourself. That's okay, though. That's okay. I mean, I'm just having fun reading these comments right now. Alright guys, we're almost there. Let's start prepping this drink, huh? Shall we? Alright, first thing we're going to do, half an ounce of lime juice. We're doing our Ramos Gym Fizz right now. Alright, half an ounce of lime. Half an ounce of lemon. So half an ounce of lime, half an ounce of lemon. Then, we're gonna do one ounce heavy whipping cream. do three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. Two ounces of gin. One egg white. Lock our tins, give it a nice hard shake.
and open up our soda water. I'm going to put our ice in here. I'm just going to do one single rock of ice. Pre-chilled glass. And we're going to add a little soda bottom of this glass, like so. Shake until this ice is completely done. So we did one single rock, and we've shaken until the ice is completely gone. in there. All right, now we stick this into the fridge. And stick our Ramos into the fridge for a couple of minutes. I'm just going to let it sit there after we've done our, after we've done our uh, cocktail. I'm going to just clean up our bar area a little bit because uh, a clean bar is a godly bar. You want to make sure that your station is always clean. Always clean. Like this. Now organize our stuff a little bit. Now you think now, is Marius rooting against me? That's the question. Is he going to be like, oh, Leonardo is going to mess this up? We did try to do this once before, and it just did not work out for whatever reason. Uh, then Marius was doubting me for a while. So we'll see. Let's see what's he. Steve, the bartender, didn't catch that full comment. What did they want us to do with shots? Did you do orange flower water? No, orange flower water goes on top, Marius. Orange flower water goes as the garnish. Just gonna let that sit in the fridge for a little second. I'm gonna read some comments. Yeah, it's a little workout. It's a little workout. We'll do the shots with you if you if it's live streamed. Oh well, I could. I mean, honestly, what I wanted to do was a video on bartender call shots. So not just like whatever shots, but like basically shots that bartenders call at bars when they go to bars. That's what. That's the video I want to make. Shots live stream. We go one for one. Jesus. I don't know. There be a lot of, be, better be a lot of super chat there, though, to make that hangover worth it. 100% Team Leandro. Thank you, Miguel. I was feeling a little sensitive seeing as Marius' video exploded on the, the other channel. Steve does special shots, does shot special videos for subscriber milestones. Y'all should do a collab shots video together. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have been asking me for that. But, you know, I don't want to just, like, steal that from Steve. That's, just, like, Steve's thing, and I love that he does that. So, and honestly, I would love to do a collaboration with anything that Steve does. I still have to do, you know, Steve and I did a collaboration a little bit ago, and I still have to go out and get uh, the uh, liqueur that I need to get to kind of create that. But, honestly, as soon as I was about to do that, all of this COVID stuff broke out, and then I was stuck to the house. 
Oh, yeah, Team Marius, Team Marius. All right, is it time to get our, our drink out of the fridge? I think it is. All right. So we've let it settle in here. All right, guys, you ready? All right, then we take a, take a spoon and stick that down to the end of the, to the glass. And we just, like, pour the rest of our... cocktail in there. All right, ready? Ready, guys? Let's see if we can build this up. All right? Let's see if we can do this. What? Perfectly made Ramos. If that ain't a perfect Ramos chin fizz, I don't know what is. That is it. That is it, guys. Let's see. Can we tempt fate and go even more? <gasps> oh, look at that. It's starting, oh, it's starting right here. It's starting to, to buckle. There it is. The perfect Ramos Gin Fizz. You saw it here on the Educated Bar Fly. All right, I'm putting this down. I'm going to take a sip now. I know I had a Surfside sip here somewhere. Oh, sorry. Forgot the orange flower waters, which you want to do like a little. I mean, seriously, this is stuff is powerful stuff. So you just want to like, couple drippity drops on top. That's all you got. Garnish, well done, sir. The orange water, yes, it's already done. I got the orange water. There you go. Mmm. Leandro can make. I got a tip for the Ramos. Thank you, Chris. That is a perfectly good Ramos chin fizz. I'm going to suck the top off now. Is that terrible? But horrible. Does Leandro uh, do drink requests for Super Chat? Yeah, I'll do a drink request for Super Chat. The only thing is, is that I could do a drink re request for Super Chat, but I may not have all the ingredients. It's some crazy, if it's something crazy or prep heavy. So it has to be simple drinks. But yeah, I'll do a drink request for Super Chat. Yeah, no. Tr Thank you so much. There you go, Marius. Eat your words, my friend. So, who was. Mm. Mm, That's so good. It's like eating ice cream. Careful where you are when you say I'm going to suck the top off. You know what? Oh, I'll say that wherever I damn please. <laughs> And you know what? That's a damn good Ramos, too. On top of it all. There you have it. I think that um, I have a 12-year-old's Eldorado Demerara rum, and I need a cocktail suggestion. Greg suggested a Queen's Park Swizzle, which is a good suggestion, I gotta say. A Queen's Park Swizzle is a really good suggestion, Logan, uh, for a um, Demerara rum. That being said, because Demerara Rums are, you know, Queen's Park Swiss is a good one. Do I have a better, are you asking if I have a better? Thank you. Make your favorite Campari drink. Okay, done. I'll do that right now. But you guys are all, you're going to have to go, you're going to have to wait till I go get the Campari.
All right, I'm back with the Campari. Making my favorite Campari cocktail. But I will say this, as far as the Demerara rum, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking like something that's better than a Queen's Park Swizzle. You can do an Ancient Mariner, which is basically lime, simple syrup, Demerara rum, Jamaican rum, and pimento dram. It is the shit, it's really, really good. You'll like that a lot. So that will be suited towards your Eldorado 12 year uh, pretty well, I think. So I gotta rinse this out before I make the next drink. Not a bad aroma, see that? Ready for my favorite Campari drink? Here's my favorite Campari drink. First thing we're going to do is quarter a lime. This is a tiny lime, so I'm just going to use the whole thing. All right, we're going to use I got a little bit of caster sugar left, so I'm just going to use one bar spoon of caster sugar. Tiny bit more since it's the end of the package. Package. Okay. We're gonna do half an ounce of simple syrup. Muddle pants. We're going to do one ounce of gin. And then an ounce and a half of Campari. This will be our main spirit. Glassware. Scotia crushed. Oh, nice. You made a house made spice, all oh, spice ram. Very cool. Very, very cool. I love that. And we're just going to dump the whole thing in here. a big mag surfside sip and there it is my favorite Campari cocktail mm. oh, that's wonderful Ooh, what we got up here if you have time and the mint to make it I'd love for you to show us how to prepare a swizzle not many good videos on it that I can find unfortunately I do not have any mint right now I did, however, Logan, make a Queen's Park Swizzle uh, video, and it is a good one. I used white rum in there, and it scandalized everyone that I wasn't using Demerara rum, but uh, it is a good one, 
and it utilizes the mint that you need. That being said, not all swizzles have mint. Uh, only specific ones do. A swizzle is more about how you prepare the cocktail, and, and, and that is a lime and, lime and sugar and simple syrup. Props to you guys for keeping... Uh, Keeping the awesome content coming. I've learned a lot from you guys and have a great time experiencing it because of it. Thank you. Thank you, Jonal. Is it Jonal? 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 Casey Jenkins, I have a drink request. One ounce simple syrup, dash lime juice, 1.5 beef eater gin, half of vodka, top with ginger beer. I don't have any ginger beer, Casey Jenkins. Thank you for the super chat. Don't have any ginger beer, but I will try it in another live stream. How about that? I will try it in the next live stream, maybe. This right here, though, bitter, limey. You get a little bit of the botanicals from the gin. It's really nice. Glad you're staying in. Hope you are and remain well. Got myself a bottle of Mr. Black there. Loving it. Sweet. Thank you. I hope I remain well as well, and I hope all of you guys remain well as well. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What else, you guys? What else? What's the cocktail called? Did it? Did I miss it? I actually... So I do... Usually I do this with mezcal, and I called it a caiparissimo. But, uh... But, uh, this one doesn't have a name. What do you guys think it should be called? Oh, it's so good. Got any suggestions for a cocktail with banana do Brazil? Actually, I have five cocktail suggestions from uh, for cocktails with a banana do Brazil. You should make a bananas foster cocktail. Banana do Brazil, the Gaffard banana do Brazil, is something that I've been meaning to do a video on, just because there's so many good uses for it, and it's um, uh, and it's uh, it's something that people kind of puzzle over. So I'll definitely do that. Shot of Fernet for a super chat. Okay. How much are you going to super chat me to do a shot of Fernet? Do a full ounce and a half? There you go. There you go, guys. I'll tip this toward the camera if you can see it. What's the super chat? What are you going to do? Five bucks? Ten bucks? Five bucks? What's your quarantini of choice? Greg got, Greg got fairly wasted on his yesterday. Yeah, and actually, somebody asked me to make... Okay, $2 for a shot of Fernet. Here you go. Cheers. Bottoms up. Woo! Hell yeah. Um, I don't have a quarantine of choice. I like things that are good. I, I, I don't know. You know, my quarantine of choice is Japanese highball. That is my quarantine of choice. Although, somebody did ask me to recreate Greg's quarantine from the other day and then taste it and tell you guys about it. And I want to do that, but I don't have any... Um, I don't have any... Uh, he used cane... Cane juice, like cane sugar juice, and I don't have that, so I can't make it. I know you wear a pin from Ventura Spirits. Have you used their strawberry brandy? Uh, I don't know if I've used one in a video, but I have used their strawberry brandy in the past, and I love it. And everything that they do at Ventura Spirits is uh, something, I, like, I have a lot of cocktails that I use the Amaro Angelino that they make. Um, I love everything they do. I also did a whole bunch of stuff with their Opuntia Prickly Pear Liqueur. So I love what they do, and yeah. I'm not sure if I use the strawberry brandy, though. Uh, let's see. Super Chat or sticker for Malort. I don't know. If you guys want me to do a shot of Malort right now, it's going to cost you. Because uh, I did a shot, Malort, a shot of Malort at the top of the show. So, Japanese highball is great. A little loathe to admit it. But best I've made was Nika from Barrel. Yeah, that sounds pretty damn good. Steve the bartender. What is Steve the bartender requesting? What? Steve the bartender, Australian 10. That's awesome. Thanks, Steve the bartender. Did you want me to do anything for it? <laughs> uh, Darren, sorry, two bucks ain't getting you a Malort. You're gonna up that like another three to three or four bucks, and I'll, I'll do the shot. Shots. Oh fuck! I'm gonna have to do a fucking shot of Malort now. 
Oh my god. I'm going to do a live stream on how hungover I am tomorrow. All right, here we go. Malort. I'm in the middle. All right, here we go. Cheers. Shout out Malort. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. This might be the video that ends Leandro. I've had quite a few drinks, shots of Malort. What, what is happening? Steve the bartender, you better be doing shots too. I know, Steve the bartender, you better be for crying out loud. I don't know if they have Malort in uh, Australia. I don't think that that's something that's easy to get. Do you make cocktails with some of the Polish liqueurs Mary's brought back? Uh, interested to see how you use the balance oak vodka. You know what? I have not used uh, the oak vodka for any cocktails, but you know what? Challenge accepted, Logan. I'll make one and see and see see how it goes. Um, it's going to be hard to make a cocktail with that because the 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 flavor profile is really oaky but delicate. Shot of simple syrup. Really? Seriously? You want me to do a shot of simple syrup? <laughs> I don't like this game and where it's going. <laughs> oh my god. You want me to do a shot? Okay. I'll do a shot of simple syrup. Gross. I just did a shot of simple syrup. It was, you know, kind of gross. All right, what else? Your shot question. It's a uh, girlfriend. I love Tiga, but she's allergic to nuts. Any replacement for Orja? Ooh, that's tough. That's a tough one. I'm going to have to look into that. But I'm sure there's a replacement for Orja. We're just going to have to find it. That being said, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Well, I gotta tell you that the craziest spirit that I have ever come across actually came also from China. So a friend of mine had gone to China or like a, and come back and had brought this liqueur back that had like literally had like a turtle floating in it. It was really crazy. And all sorts of stuff macerated in it. It smelled gamey and tasted gross. The Gamel Dansk is a very close second to that. The Gamel Dansk is like Malort on crack. It is very bitter on the finish, uh, a lot like Malort, but super bittery on the finish. Um, lemon poppy seed cocktail. I mean, yes, please, but I haven't made one yet, but I could. Ooh, avocado pit orja. That sounds really good. Uh, I'm going to look up that article just to read it on my own, but I uh, hadn't heard of it, but that would be amazing. On a scale of 1 to 10, how drunk are you? Uh, two. Three. Three. 1.5 gin, one lime, 0.5 mezcal, 0.5 simple, ango. That sounds good. I like that. Ever try a penicillin? Of course, love a penicillin. Although you were talking to someone else, but of course I did. I make a really good lemon poppy seed tart. Ooh. See, Jaeger bomb. I don't have Jaeger. Well, I have Jaeger. That's not true, but I don't, I do not have any energy drinks in my house. So I can't do a air bomb. Oy. Um, no Jaeger bomb. No Jaeger bomb. All right, guys. Uh, we're like, we're coming in on a couple hour mark. I don't know what everyone else does for, whoa. More shots. Do your favorite vodka shot. Vodka shot, like what vodka shot? Like Logan, seriously, buddy. Let's talk about these vodka shots you want to do. I mean, like, what do you want? Are you talking about like a, like a kamikaze shot or something? Like, vodka. Oh, I know what I can do. 
Let's do a let's do a Ferrari shot. You guys want to do a Ferrari shot? More shots. Do your favorite vodka shot. I need inspiration for my next frat party. All right, I'm gonna. You're gonna bring something in to your frat party that is a little bit more forgivable than a vodka shot. Senior Logan, we're gonna do what's called a Ferrari shot. Okay. We're clean a glass first because we need like an actual somewhat of a shot glass. Somewhat of a shot glass, right? All right, so we're gonna do what's called a Campari, uh, what's called a Ferrari shot. All right, this is a bartender call shot. All right, I don't know what they do in Australia, but in the U.S., this is a bartender call shot. You look like a pro if you ordered this in the bars. This is. Equal parts Campari and Fernet. That's called the Ferrari. This is the last shot of the night, too, guys. Come and end this live stream after this. Thank you guys for joining us on this live stream today. Uh, hopefully, you got something out of this. You saw me make a perfectly executed Ramos Chin Fizz. Thank you very much. And uh, we did some viewer cocktails. Robert, Robert Co. Love the cocktail that you that you uh, submitted, and the uh, the shrub is great. Uh, and uh, the 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 Vincent cocktail was great too. Actually, pretty good. That that Amaro bomb that we did. Uh, here's to you guys. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this live stream, and we will be live streaming in a day or two. I'm glad that this was kind of a success. I'm glad because, you know, I had to set all this up myself and I didn't think I could do it and I did it. And I'm, I'm proud of myself. So cheers and I'll see you guys on another time. Hey, oh yeah, definitely. Thank you, Steve the Bartender, for showing up on our stream. That was really cool of you. I'm really glad that you were commenting and hanging out, and um, I know that you're a little reticent to do live streams, but you should. We should. We should do a live stream together. We should figure out a way to patch each other in. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. Uh, I kind of feel like you and I are bartenders of the same mind, and we would have a good time hanging out. So, you know, I'd like to do a little bit more with you. You know, I know you're a busy man and everything, but thank you so much for the for the uh, for everything. Thank you so much for the collaboration. Every, thank you, everybody, for everything. I'm a little drunk now. I don't know what I'm saying. So I'm going to stop here, and I will say goodnight. Good night.